All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about why your game needs a settings menu. And while this sounds obvious, there's a bunch of benefits on why you should make it early, but more importantly, exactly what type of settings options you should be looking out for. Now, before I begin, I wanna quickly uh, announce that I have a special announcement coming up in my newsletter. So if you see the uh, link down in the description below, and if you're interested, go ahead and sign up, all right? Now, why a settings menu? You see, every player subjectively has a way to enjoy your game, right? And I say this because not everyone has the same computer or the same control scheme or even preferences on like how loud the game should be, right? And so if you disable the ability to fix these things, players could become frustrated because now they're forced to play the game in a specific manner that just may not be beneficial for them. And this is very important because this is actually one of the most common causes of a bad review. You see, a bad review can come by, you know, bad game design or maybe some subjective experiences. But if a bad review comes in because, hey, I couldn't adjust the volume or I couldn't adjust the screen size, well, that's something that you shouldn't have an excuse for. Little fun fact, or I guess like little backstory here, uh, I launched my very first game without a proper settings menu and that went terribly wrong because, um, well, first of all, players couldn't stream or record the content of the game because half of the menu was like outside of the screen's resolution. And then also there's barely any like volume control. So it was very difficult to like watch the player play the game and then hear them voice their reactions, but they can't lower the volume. It's a headache. And so as a developer, you should have no excuse to enable these abilities to let your players, you know, play how they want, right? That being said, the best way to combat any bad review, or at least like the most common bad review syndrome here, is by making a settings menu. And I want to be clear when I say that a settings menu in this context is basically a set of player accessibility preferences that you can adjust. The reason why this is important is because one, every commercial game has it, and two, again, you want to make sure that your players play the game the way that they can, right? Not everyone has the same hardware, not everyone has the same preferences, but making a settings menu very early in your game, in your prototype in, in, in particular, is extremely important because of all of the dependencies that your game is gonna have based off of the settings menu. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's, this is just like a, a minor option that I can just tweak whenever I want. Why, why should I make this first? You see, let me give you a brief example. Let's say you have a combat system, right? Well, what happens when, I don't know, like two swords clash, right? There's probably a sound effect. Well, wait a minute, a sound effect implies that there is volume. And so what happens is in your settings menu, you probably want to have a way to adjust volume. Ideally, you can make a combat system and then add the sound effects and do whatever you want. Cool. But the problem is that if you leave the sound effects portion all the way at the end of development, well, guess what? Now you have like a bunch of spaghetti code that you have to adjust in order to make sure that it properly aligns with your settings. It's going to be a headache. But what I'm trying to say is, hey, you want to make sure that you make the settings menu, ensure you know what options are available, and then just really make sure that everything respects what the player's adjustments are. So for example, if we have max volume, then when I attack my player or my enemy in this case with a sword, I should hear that sound effect really loud. But if I said, oh, I wanna hear it in mute, then guess what, I shouldn't hear any sound effects. This should ideally be done right at the beginning so that you avoid, again, spaghetti code, dependencies, and just backtracking a lot. And also, this entire thing makes you realize, wait a minute, I need to plan my design very carefully and let's say I'm road mapping a game, right? Which are the instructions that you take to build your game. You are gonna quickly realize, okay, well, if my game has these seven mechanics, for example, which of these mechanics actually are affected by the, the screen size or the sound effects, or maybe there's a special button that I have to pay attention to. Pay very close attention to this because there's sometimes, you know, sometimes we might over scope, even in the settings menu, we might add features that we simply don't need. And so by making a strict list of what we're working on and then finding the ways to adjust that via settings is gonna be way more efficient to actually making your game. And this is why it has to be done early. And also remember, maybe players just wanna play a certain way. So if you give them the ability to tailor their own experiences, it'll be very positive for them. You just basically wanna make sure that, hey, um, it, let's say it's like super late at night. Um, you know, I have a speaker, but I have some friends on the other room. I don't wanna wake them up. I wanna play my game in mute. Yeah, you can press the button on your keyboard, sure. But like, maybe you still wanna hear that uh, music in the background, but not the sound effects, right? you should enable those options as well. And finally, another little benefit is, you know, we're talking about the player, but as a developer, you probably want to record content of your own game as well. And so here you can see me literally booting up my own game, putting the music background to zero percent, adding sound effects to show you this clip of me speaking while you can hear the sound effects of this clip. And so having those adjustabilities will allow you to just, again, make content about your game as well. So it's another bonus. Being said, 
let's go ahead and talk about the actual options you need to have in your game right now when it comes to adjustments. Number one, you need to have the ability to make your game in full screen mode or windowed mode, right? And this is important because maybe sometimes, you know, in a windowed mode context, you would have the ability to click on other apps and browsers. And, you know, this is probably where you can start recording content as a whole. You might have the ability and options to record your game in full screen mode, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But again, some players simply might be watching a stream while playing a game. Maybe some players just really want to focus on all the action, so you they have the ability to like have uh, full screen. So whatever you do, just make sure that it's very simple, very basic, but just make sure that you enable these two abilities. Um, and obviously, it depends on the game, right? Because if you're playing like an idler, it's probably always going to be on windowed mode, sure. But just make sure that players have the option to play the way that they want. The second thing is the volumes here. So you'll see in this clip, you can hear the music go up, and then the music go down, and then you'll hear it go back up again. <laughs> and then I have the master one, so it basically stops the sound effects and the music. And then the long story short is, hey, adjust your volumes based on sound effect, music, and like both of them, also known as the master controller. That way you can, again, create content and just let the player experience the sound effects that they want to have. The next part here is actually going to be resolution. Um, little fun fact, the Steam Deck actually standardly uses the 16 by 10 resolution while most monitors would use like 16 by 9 depends you know other players have like ultra wide uh monitors and such so you just really want to consider what are the most like viable options here but just consider hey if my game was made in a way that supports both resolutions that's good also can my game support a multiple array of resolutions then yeah that's good because again everyone has a different way of playing the game so just be very aware about making sure that you have an option to adjust resolution but also just make sure that your game can be played in any resolution regardless also a little bonus tip excuse me if you're making a game right and you want to make like shorts youtube shorts TikToks, um you know anything that like gets presented on a phone you want to make sure that you kind of like use this like little fake UI type of thing to see how it would look like on a phone. And the reason why is because you can see here, uh, Dodge King does not showcase the core mechanic that well because it's really zoomed in. You don't really see all of the UI elements. You don't see everything else, but you can see the main characters kind of like fighting each other, right? And so that could be your game as well. If your game can showcase what it does without UIs or maybe all your UIs are like centered so that you can see everything, that could be very beneficial for making content. Um, and ultimately, this is kind of just like a, a dev call where it's like, hey, should I just showcase the core part of my game? Should I put the UI in the middle so that it can be showcased when I make shorts? How important is that? So just be aware about that. But the whole point is going back to the resolution talk. Yeah, just make sure like you can actually put that little like phone screen there so you can see how that works. All right. In this next clip, you'll see that on the left, uh, this is a recording of my computer being air fried by my game because it was so bad. It wasn't optimized. It just did like, it was again, like you can literally see the slowdown, which was reflected in the recording. And I think that's hilarious, but uh, patching up the game and optimizing it is not only really important to do, but I also gave my very first game the ability to adjust quality. And this can be done with FPS. This could be done with uh, frames per second. This could be done with um, you know, the level of quality that your game wants to represent. This is something that is that you can do in Unity. I also believe in Unreal as well. But the idea is that you should always give players the ability to adjust how heavy your game can run, right? If it's like, hey, I'm running this game on a potato, I probably need to play the game on low quality. Totally fine. This is something Unreal needs to like really focus on as well because not everyone has like a really cool expensive computer that can run these games. But let's say you're that guy, you know, you're a baller, you have uh, you spent like 10k on your computer for some reason and it can run everything. Yeah, you want to, pro you probably want to play on like 64k quality and everything. Yeah, then like put the game on high. But you need to let the player have the option to even adjust that because you never know. And also always default to the lowest quality so that the common denominator of players can actually like open your game in the first place. All right. Now, the next one's a little bit uh, tricky because uh, it is game dependent. Not every single game needs a save or load system. But if you do have a game that tracks records or actually like has checkpoints and save systems, please make sure that you give the player the ability to save, load, reset, delete, do all the things necessary that a save system would properly have. If you don't do that, it would be very frustrating for them to kind of like get soft locked or have these scenarios where, you know, hey, I accidentally saved. I didn't want to do that. Is there a way to revert? You know, just like give them the option to like play around with their save settings. The next thing is controller modes, right? 
Uh, don't be mistaken by controller rebind. We'll talk about that in a second. But controller modes is also a game dependent thing. So here, for example, in Dodge King, you can go ahead and just move left, right, up, down. But you also have the tap controllers or the hold controllers. By tapping, you literally, you know, every time you tap, you make a movement. But when you hold, then when you press and hold down the button, you're actually just like continuously moving over and over. This is a game mode option that you're able to have. And obviously it makes sense in the context of Dodge King, but you know, maybe your game has a specific mode that you need to allow your players to adjust, right? The next thing, and this is the most important part, controller rebinds, right? Now, this is kind of difficult to program because it's very open. There are probably assets and prefabs you can kind of play around with. At the same time, you can also use sets, meaning you can say, hey, in set mode one, um, X button means jump, square is attack, right? But in set button, in set mode two, the circle button is the attack and triangle is jump, right? So you can also have like, you know, presets to let players just have a easier way to like select their buttons. At the same time, maybe there are some players that simply, you know, oh, I don't have a shift key anymore, so I can't use the shift key button. What can I possibly do? Well, that's where your control rebind option comes in because now players can say, wait a minute, I don't have this button available, but I can rebind it to another one and that's going to help me do what I have to do. So just make sure that all of that is available. The next thing is making sure that you have resets. Let's say your player was adjusting a lot of settings all at once and they're like, oh, I just, you know, what? let me like go back to the intended way or let me just like fix everything how it was. Have a reset button that literally just defaults to what it was originally at. Now, the, the ones that I just discussed are kind of like requirements that you should have in your game. Now, these are extra options that they're not necessary, but they do have a lot of benefits, all right? The first one is actually going to have, uh, it's going to talk about having a language mode, right? So if your game can support other languages, uh, which is really good for market access, meaning, hey, if your game is available in a different language, there's probably a whole market that can now play your game, right? So that's really good to consider. Um, but if that's an option for your game, then you should definitely consider having that. If that's kind of too much work, or maybe localization is out of the scope of your game, whatever, move on. But just remember that this is something that's very beneficial to have in the long run. The second thing is probably a requirement now that I think about it, but hey, like have a safety hazard thing where it's like, hey, let the players know that this game might have flashing colors or, you know, like things that could be strong, right? Um, and then if you also have the ability to disable strong flashes or anything that can, you know, be perceived as hazardous, uh, let them disable that as well, all right? Now, the other thing is like, you can have multiple options and it, this is like a like a double-edged sword when i say it's good to have as many options as possible because again the more customization that shows up for the player the better at the same time you don't need a hundred bajillion options either you should just scope your options based off of what actually matters in your game and how players can like play around with it as a whole right uh this is also huge common sense this is actually being discussed a lot but like apparently apparently this was like common sense but don't don't add motion blur in your game and if you do for some reason have the ability to disable it and then more importantly default it as disabled and then enable it if you actually want to like experience that right so a little weird but it's just like something that is kind of like a disclaimer that should be discussed a bit more often i guess okay and lastly um here's some other options that you should be aware about so you know if you're playing a first person shooter or a game that basically you are the camera, right? As they say, you can have a head bobbing system that you can like toggle on and off. If you have a game that has like a lot of colors or the ability to even change colors, something like a color filter to support color blindness is something that's nice. Um, mouse sensitivity and aim sensitivity is huge going back to first person shooters or anything that requires a lot of mouse movements. Um, we talked about the graphic settings, which is like the quality part, but in particular, if you have the ability to enable anti-aliasing or different render options so that your game can perform a certain way, that's something very important to consider as well. And lastly, gameplay styles, which depends on the game that you're actually writing and such, right? This means, hey, like, for example, in a fighting game, you could have simple mode, which is like, hey, you press one button, and if you spam that button, you do the combos. But then in technical mode, you have to actually insert the special commands in order to get, like, the cool like feisty stuff right so these are things that you should also consider so to recap because there's a lot that we kind of talked about number one settings in any commercial game is required just make sure that you design it properly you kind of plan for it and you understand what is actually necessary because at the end of the day settings will become a dependency one way or another might as well do that first so that everything else kind of has an easier flow of development when you're building your game the second thing is that 
you should have these must-haves, your essentials. Otherwise, you're probably going to get some bad reviews. And that's going to be your full screen windows, your resolution, your volume controllers, your defaulters, your save systems. If you have some, you know, have a reset option, your controller options and your gameplay sensitivities, such as mouse control, right? And lastly, only add what fits your game's scope, you know, there's not not every single feature needs to be added but there's also extra features that your game should probably consider again if you're playing a game that is very sensitive to colors you should probably add an option to enable colorblind players to actually play your game right um if your game is something that's like very simple doesn't have that much language then yeah you probably don't need a language system but if it's a narrative game and you want it to have like a bunch of players you should probably consider you know localizing for example and many more other op options here all right now Lastly, right, so thank you guys for watching the video. This is the recap and such. But if you guys are interested in watching something else or have any suggestions for what type of production tips I should give, uh, please let me know. I'm super open to hearing what you guys have to say. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this best serves you, and I'll catch you in the next one.